I know it's Fat Tuesday, but I'm trying to figure out what would be Sunday, what we would call it for Sunday. Um, so, But we do celebrate this day. We do continue to pray for those who are listed in your bulletin. Uh, continued prayers for uh, Jim Yessian, who's in the hospital. Uh, also for Debbie Tripp, who's my brother-in-law's mother, who had to have some major uh, surgery this week. And then also for Morgan Andrin, Dawn Andrin's uh, older daughter, uh, she's nonverbal and has other problems, uh, was, has been in the hospital with pneumonia uh, following some uh, uh, choking and other things incident. So please do keep uh, Morgan as well as her family in your prayers. Is there anyone else that we should be best special mind for? Yes. I lost my pen. So yes. Yes. As always, I invite those who are joining us online to add any other prayers to that list so that folks can lift them up during the week and also to check in and let us know that you're worshiping with us this morning. I invite the congregation to stand as we begin, as we are called together into God's presence. You call us to the mountaintop. We follow curious and wondering. You call us down from the mountain. To the streets and alleys. And we come slowly, catching reflected glory. You call us to follow you into homeless shelters and halls of power. And we look around in disgust, unwilling to see your holiness there. When we see you in the beauty of creation, and this is the of people. Forgive us, O oh God. When we long for your voice, and forgive us, O oh God. When we would rather everyone just keep their shoes on, forgive us, O oh God. Draw us near to you and fill us with your spirit. As we prepare for our, our uh, procession, the kids will be coming forward and uh, uh, going around to the sanctuary with our Alleluia banner. I will move the camera out of the way. Um, but folks are also invited to join them or come up as well for a cross of glitter on your foreheads uh, as a sign of God's love and grace. 
So give God the glory for given and loved without end. We celebrate the grace we have received in Jesus Christ. We march with joy here that we may learn to live into the glory of God in the world. Come, let us sing praises to the Lord our God. Thanks be to God.
Tatum, hey, go this way so we can get it to it says L. You're the best guy. All right, you guys can go sit down. We'll see you in a little bit. Praise our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Or you can put it away. Or you can eat it. 
Or you can eat it. I don't know if you want to eat it all. Eat it all. Alright. So because what happens, what happens on Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. So you got glitter on your face. Ash Wednesday is my birthday. I was born on Ash Wednesday. You were born on Ash Wednesday? Well, my birthday changes, but it's it changes. It, it changes sometimes. So this year. It's going to be Ash Wednesday this be, year. Right. So Ash Wednesday is when we start Lent. So I'll talk more about Lent later, but that's what we're, that's what we're celebrating today. The other thing that we're celebrating is Jesus. <laughs> Jesus was transfigured. That's a really weird word, 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 is it? Well, he died eventually, but this is the day we remember he was transfigured. Was he? What does that mean? It's right. That's a really weird word, isn't it? This is Transfiguration Sunday. So it's when he changed. He, he, he was up on a mountain, and all of a sudden, this bright light came, and all his clothes were so white that people couldn't even see. It was so white. And it changed before him. So kind of like things change, right? Sometimes things change. Jesus didn't change who he was. He just showed all of who he was, right? He showed his glory on that mountain. So he was white? It wasn't. It was just glowing white. It was like he became a glowing lamp. White. He, like, it's like he, he became the sun. Like he became a uh, glow of God. Huh? Like he became the sun of God. Right. And he, he glowed with all of that, all right? So the Aren't disciples are the children of God. We're the children of God, right? And Jesus is the son of God. So he changed how he looked. It's kind of like some days, right? Maybe, did anybody wake up grumpy today? Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't believe you're ever grumpy. You should have been grumpy. Yeah. Yes, I'm really grumpy sometimes. So sometimes we're grumpy, right? And so sometimes the people can help make us happy, right? Or they can show us that they love us. And so what happens is, Kitty, my favorite thing, and then he changed. See? Lena has one of those. Lena one of those, so he no, changed. Lena, I'm oh, okay. Lena. So he changed how he, Jesus changed and showed all the fullness of his love. So every time we think of transfiguration, we can think about how God's love helps us maybe when we're sad, to know that we're sad. Or when you go home and you see the glitter, I have glitter everywhere. I was sitting on some glitter because I dropped a little. What? And so every time I can remember, every time I think about it or see the glitter, I can remember that Jesus loves me. Right? So that would just be today until I get a shower, right? Or until I really, really wash my face and keep it dry. Right? Um, so I know some of you are gonna you're gonna some of you are gonna be singing. So I invite Ms. Joy forward for those who are gonna be singing, and the others can go sit in the front pew and listen. If you're not singing with the group, you can go sit. On the front pew, all right, and then you're, the rest of you are going to sing, right? So you can stand up. Those who are singing, stay here. Those who are not, can sit in the pew. Got it? Do you want to sing? Okay, just sit right there. <laughs> Jenny, do you want to hold that or no? no. You want to give it to me? Thank you. Jake, you want to hold that? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. All right. Mask up, please. See your gorgeous face. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> Are we ready? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 
was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the pro prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place. Until that day dawns and the morning star rises in our hearts, First of all, you must understand that this, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation, because no prophecy ever came by human will, but men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. Word of God, word of life. Let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Six days later, he took Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. And suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with them. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. 
But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace, Grace, Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. So there's a series of jokes about how many people or how many things does it take to change a light bulb. And one of my favorites is how many dogs does it take to change a light bulb? So just a few of them. A golden retriever would say, the sun is shining, the day is young, we've got our whole lives ahead of us, and you're inside worrying about a stupid burned elbow. A dachshund? You know I can't re reach that stupid lamp. A rottweiler? Make me. <laughs> a lab? Oh please, oh please, me, please let me change the label. Can I, can I, can I, huh, 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 can I? A German shepherd? I'll change it as soon as I've led these people from the dark, check to make sure that I haven't missed any, and make one more perimeter pass to see that no one has taken advantage of this situation. A pointer? I see it. There it is. There it is. And a shih tzu? Who? Me? Change a light bulb? We are royal descendants and have stuff, and we have staff to do that for us. And cats? Cats? Well, people change. Dogs don't change light bulbs. People do that. So the question is, how long can I expect it to be till you feed me? Because I do say that while dogs have masters, cats have staff. <laughs> so another one is, of course, Christians, different kinds of Christians, charismatics, only one, hands are already in the air. Pentecostals, ten, one to change the bowl and nine to pray against the spirit of darkness. Um, Episcopalians, three. One to call the electrician, one to mix the drinks, and one to talk about how much better the old one was. <laughs> Methodists, undetermined. Whether your light is bright, dull, or completely out, you are loved. You can be a light bulb, a turnip bulb, or a tulip bulb. Bring a bulb of your choice to the Sunday lighting service and a covered church to pass. And Lutherans, none. Lutherans don't believe in change. <laughs> Transfiguration is about change. Now, previous to this reading, the whole, in fact, the whole of chapter 16 would have been good to read as well, because before this, one of the things that Jesus says to his disciples is, who do people say that I am? You know, what are they saying about me? And they're like, well, some say you're Moses or Elijah, others say you're John the Baptist or prophet. And Jesus is like, well, what do you say? Peter, with his wonderful confession, says, you are the Messiah, the Son of God. That's good. Peter, you got it right. But then Jesus goes on to say, well, this is what's going to happen to this Messiah. I'm going to be arrested and beaten and killed and rise again after three days. Peter's like, uh-uh, that's not how this works. That's not what a Messiah does. To which Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. You're setting your mind on human things and not divine things. Jesus was transfigured before them in all his glory. And Peter then wanted to hold on to that because this was his vision of a Messiah. That this is what Jesus was all about. That this was a Messiah. And so he wanted to hold on to that moment. Let's build booths. Right? Not permanent structures, right? But at least both, so we can like celebrate this, that we can revel in this, so that we can hold on to this moment. Jesus, then the cloud or the voice comes from heaven, this is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. Listen to what Jesus has already told you. This is not what the Messiah is to be. And the light goes out and they go down the mountain as they head then to Jerusalem. Change is one of those things that happens constantly. But it's that thing also that many times we want to hold on to 
and we don't want to change. We've certainly seen enough changes over the past almost three years, almost three years through the pandemic. We've had, we had to make some pretty drastic changes. There's small changes that have happened day in and day out, most well, certainly the weather. You know, no matter how much they predict it, we never know what it's going to be in the morning. No matter what my Amazon Alexa tells me, Alexa, what's the weather for today? Yeah, sometimes she gets it right. Those small changes day in and day out. The little changes of weather, of traffic lights, of what's going to happen from day to day. Changing our clothes, changing our, our refart, buying groceries. And then there's the bigger changes. Some of them, wonderful changes. As kids get older and celebrate birthdays or go on to graduate or go to college, as people start new jobs, those kinds of changes we celebrate. And other changes, kids growing older, we want to hold on to them when they're, when they're little and not have them grow up. Or other changes when people, as people lose jobs, as people face all kinds of things, as we see the chaos of our world, that some of those changes are not good. And we want to hold on to what we can. As I was reading through, um, not just jokes, I don't just look at jokes during the week. Oops, wrong people. I was, one of my colleagues uh, shared uh, something that one of the professors from Luther Seminary wrote about this Sunday, about transfiguration. And she talks about that transfiguration is this threshold of what is and what is to come, both in terms of the scriptural story, Jesus being on this mountaintop showing what the Messiah looks like, but that the Messiah will be fully realized in what is to come. But that to talk about change, change by definition, she says, is a simultaneous holding on what was and looking forward to the hope of what can be. Change insists that you exist in a place sometimes that you don't want to be. We've certainly seen that in the life of the church. We often can look back at what the church as a whole, whether this one specifically or others, used to be. Churches were filled, right? It was hard to get a parking spot. Now it's hard to get a parking spot Tuesday nights here because of all the meetings. It was different. And we want to often go back to that if we could just change back, right? But we can't change back. There's very few things we can change back into. I can't be a four-year-old again, no matter how much fun it looks to be a four-year-old, I'm not gonna be one. The church is not gonna be what it was, but the church is something now. And we are offered opportunities to see the ways in which God is calling us to be the church in this time and place, not what was, not what we think it should be, but to live into this moment now. There's often talk about worrying that the church will die. You know, the church has been around a long time. A long time. It's seen many, many changes over the years. In fact, there's, there's one um, author who wrote a book that basically said about every 500 years, the church has a big rummage sale. <laughs> And gets rid of it. So we had, you know, the early church. We had the split between the Eastern and the Western church. We had the Reformation. Certainly that changed things. And here about 500 years after the Reformation. And the call is to see what is God calling us to do and to be in this time. And as we heard in Peter about the Holy Spirit, God's already ahead of us. We'll often say as we look at the budget, we, have, we don't know how much longer we have, but believe me, we are in much better shape than a lot of other churches. But still, it's worrisome. But I often remind us and remind myself again and again, God's not done with us here yet. God's got something in mind for us to do. Sometimes we just have to figure it out, to figure out what God is already doing because Jesus goes ahead of us to make changes, to change, to see the ways in which this world needs the love and grace of God, to see the ways in which God's love can be manifest in this world. We see the changes that we've experienced with the shelter. It used to be that we went always into the village at to some other church, and that had to change because of the circumstances, but we were able to now 
do that ourselves here. Who would have thought that 15 years ago or so? I've heard the discussions that were happening then that weren't going to happen at all, and now it's just like, of course we'll do it. The change happens because God's involved. It may not always be the way that we expect, and we may not know where it's going, and we have this discussion among colleagues all the time. We know something's up. God, give me a clear picture. Give me the plan with three points, things we can do, and so that will be the magic pill, the magic program that will fill the pews again. Jesus is like, you're starting at the wrong place. You're starting at the wrong place. Start with Jesus. And Jesus' love and grace that's given for all people. That in a world and community that needs to know that they are loved that they are all welcome, that they are all accepted, and that we can say that a lot here, but how are they known out there? We have an evangelism committee now. I know that E word that many people don't like to talk about. But beginning to look at the ways in which God has called us to be the church and to reach out into our community. You'll hear a little bit more about that during the announcements of some of the things, practical things that we have planned but ways in which we can show the community in which we live. That we are a place of welcome, but that we have a place, we have God's word to give them God's love and grace and acceptance. That we can change the perception often of the church in general. It's not always good. That we can change that by virtually just being who God has called us to be. The transfiguration was this wonderful event, this quite literally mountaintop event. But Jesus came down into the mountain, into the nitty-gritty of the earth, and headed to the cross. On Wednesday, we transition in the church year as we go into Ash Wednesday and Lent. And it's an invitation for us not so much to give things up. We can do that. That's fine. But to focus our attention on who God is, who Jesus is and how God's journey, how God is calling us individually and as a community of faith to be faithful, to be transfigured by God's love, and to be sent forth into the world by God's grace, so that we may live our lives in thankfulness and in praise. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as we sing our next hymn.
remember us as we do remember you as we proclaim our faith as we use the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that our Savior, Jesus Christ, hears us when we pray. We lift up the church, the world, and all in need. Loving God, when your son Jesus was transfigured on the mountain, your glory was revealed to the disciples. Reveal yourself to, to us each and every day, and show us evidence of your presence in our lives. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Your majestic creation includes towering mountains and deep valleys, lapping streams and broad oceans. Make us to love and care for all that you have made, just as you do. Merciful God, yeah. strengthen the compassion of our world's leaders. Show them how to walk in your ways and bless them with wisdom and mercy. Merciful God, yeah. so many are in need of comfort and care. Shine your healing light on all who are sick, grieving, or suffering. And we pray especially today for those we name now, aloud, or in our hearts. We also lift up in prayer Morgan, Matt, Donna, Madeline, John, Laura, Anthony, Kyle, Lisa, Cindy, Mary, James, Holly, Eric, Shannon, and all those who have no one to name them, and those who do not know Christ's name. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Teach us to accept all those whose differences frighten or anger us. Help us to love all your children upon whom your love shines. Merciful God, hear our prayer. With gratitude, we lift up the saints who have gone on before us. You have shown us how to live in your light. Merciful God, hear Here are the petitions may be offered silently, aloud, or online in the comments. For President Clark, President Scott says, journey through hospice, and for Sam Lopez. Be with Mark and Helen and their families as they do mourn the death of son and of a wife. Surround them with your comfort and your grace. Continue to lift up Morgan and Jim and Debbie. Bring your healing power to rest upon them and give them strength. Receive our prayers and hold all for whom we pray in your loving arms. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign or an elbow bump. Uh, or or a bow with one another as we do share God's peace with one another. And you may be seated for our musical offering.
this is Jesus. Come and see. Son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. 
And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
to give forward rather than give up something for Lent. So we're going to have a special collection this Lent, um, loose change or special offering, starting Ash Wednesday until Easter to give the gifts um, to San Lucas, Guatemala. Their mission has a school, and it's $200 a year for each student to attend. It's not a free public school like we have here. They have to pay to go. Um, so it comes out to be $200 a year, or about $20 a month. Um, so we're going to raise money to support them. The congregation has already donated five hundred dollars, and we'd like to increase that. So. Okay. Next Sunday, we'll have piggy banks for the kids. For the kids, the brother who's changing. Good. Thank you. We have been meeting the evangelism committee, and we thought we'd like to give you a little update of what we've been doing. We've been brainstorming, and we've thought of various ways maybe to um, help. And one of the things we thought was um, visitor packets that would help give information. If somebody that came in, they didn't have an opportunity to talk to anyone, they could grab a packet. So we have to build a packet and figure out what, is, what goes in that. We've been looking at other churches, and we have happened to notice a video 
introducing to the congregation from um, another church that we liked. So we're trying to figure out how we could update our uh, website with a video. Someone else suggested an online prayer request or a prayer tree. So we would need um, to update our website where they could actually put a request. This way, if you're not comfortable asking out loud in church, you can still ask. And then we would need a group of people to be in a prayer chain and just pray for whoever and whatever their request is. So we figured that was something simple. And then we were looking at April 22nd, Earth Day. We were thinking about maybe trying to do something in the community, uh, doing a portion of the bike trail possibly as a cleanup because we're so close to it. But we have to look into it and see if that's feasible. Um, we thought we could give that information at the church if anyone was around. Um, we also were thinking about um, a craft fair again. So April 27th, Camp Perlick is having a craft, craft fair. It's like a fall festival. And at that, we were thinking we could um, have information again about the church and have a bake sale and then have the coffee from the Blanc Mall and sell that as a way of earning some money for the organization. Okay. And then, you're doing so well. <laughs> <laughs> June, 20, June 2 to June 4 would be Affirmation Confirmation Sunday, but we have no those children being confirmed. So since we don't have any children being confirmed this year, we were thinking, how about having a class reunion of past confirming? Confirmation. Confirmation, yeah. So we were thinking how we could, you know, how could we get in touch with all the past people that have been confirmed in Trinity? And then... What could we do so that it was like maybe a Friday night dinner or a Saturday night dinner? And we just kind of make it a party. You know, what are you doing? Where have you gone? Would you be interested in coming back? Um, and then we need a way of getting in touch with all those people. And we were also thinking that they could send pictures of their confirmations or pictures of themselves at that age. And it would be open to anyone that was confirmed at Trinity. So if any, any of you are, you know, the lucky ones that have been here forever, you could add the, to your, their, well, we also said if you were confirmed here, like me, um, that people could send in from their, their own confirmation, but also put what church they were confirmed at. Right, exactly. And the other thing, I guess, which I, I missed, because I didn't highlight it in yellow, was we were thinking, um, the reason we're telling you now is we're hoping that you could brainstorm and see if you have any other ideas or additional help that you could give us. Um, we were going to have a host of coffee hour March 5th. So at March 5th, we'll bring more of the ideas that we have. These are the general things that we were trying to figure out. We're looking for inexpensive ways to get us visualized, to make our mark in the community and see what talents we have here who could help us. Um, in addition to that, there was uh, also a thought of a, possibly a QR code on the um, oh, yes. shed, um, which will link to a small survey uh, uh, and the, the, the um, church website, um, thinking of that kind of signage. Um, people can uh, offer their uh, their background or a prayer um, a request uh, that way also, but it will lead it into a, um, a page on our website. Um, the other thing, I guess I just want to add to it, my mom always said, many hands make light work. Mm -hmm. And we have many hands, and we can't all do this by ourselves, but if together we can. Um, I always wondered why she had six children. I guess that's why. <laughs> uh, she, uh, but she made us all work. Um, we worked in mostly in harmony. Um, and so if we have, whether you have the littlest of hands, like I was the youngest, I fed the dog, the garbage, and milk bottles come in. Uh, that's how old I am. Um, but uh, 
with that, you know, every little hand and every little thing you can do um, builds up and adds up. So we appreciate your time and any thoughts you might want to share, anything that, again, you see in the media, um, you know, or in the, paper, in the papers and, and around the signs saying, hey, this is something that maybe we could assist in or join in. Um, we appreciate it. And remember the, what is it? March 5th. March 5th. March 5th coffee hour, we will will get together and And discuss the Rudolphs on the committee, so that means Pat will probably make things. Yeah. Good stuff is coming. So we look forward to have an opportunity to talk to you and we'll listen to you on March 5th. Okay. Thank you. As I mentioned, uh, Lent does begin on Wednesday with our Ash Wednesday services at noon and 7 o'clock, so please do join us for that. Uh, you'll find, as they indicated too in your bulletin, a list of all the resources that we have available in addition to the um, Lenten Outreach Project. Uh, we've got a few samples here of things. So one of the things I've seen is these calm strips, like when you're feeling stressed out, right? You sometimes use them with kids. So I found some that have Bible verses on them, and they're a little bit of a rough surface, they're stickers. You can put them someplace where you'll... Where you'll you would feel them often, whether it's on a phone or on your computer or someplace where you're going to be. Uh, and just when you're feeling stressed, you can rub it, but also read the Bible verses that are on there. So those are in the back, one each, no more than one. I, I'm not sure how many I have. And there's a little explanation of it there uh, that you can look at. Uh, a couple other things, one for sort of for kids, but also for families, um, are these, uh, they're on card stock, and you can cut them into cards, and so it will be a card a day. Um, during Lent, um, so it's kind of a prayer calendar, so there's practices, there's things to do, um, so you can do those, cut them up, and it gives some suggestions of how uh, how you might use them. And then there's a devotional guide called Wilderness, which has daily things with artwork, uh, as well as plays for, for reflection and prayers and the like. Those are in the back as well. Uh, one other thing that we've invited folks to participate in every year is what's called Lent Madness. So you know March Madness with basketball teams? Kind of like that, but not basketball. So it's with saints. So there's lots of saints out there, most of which this year seem pretty obscure, a lot more obscure than other years, just because I think they're running out of saints. But past, present, and uh, past and present. Um, so you sign up online, so it's lentmadness.org. Each day, they or most days, except the, mostly the weekends, they send you two names, you read about them, and then you vote for your favorite. So then it eventually goes down to the saintly 16, to the elite 8, uh, down to the golden halo right before Easter. So it's kind of fun to do and to learn about some saints. They have people write a little bit different thing each, each week uh, about them, uh, so you can um, check that out. Um, a couple other things to just bring to your attention um, that uh, first Friday is in just a couple weeks. Charlie and I will be sharing about our trip to Guatemala. So it's a potluck supper, so bring a dish to pass. It doesn't have to be Guatemalan or Mexican, you can do whatever you'd like, uh, and join us for that. Uh, we're hosting the next blood drive on March 7th. Uh, it's a Tuesday. We'll be downstairs. I invite you to sign up ahead of time online. Um, I've started a new blog and Facebook page called Morning Towards Peace to help folks who are dealing with grief uh, or other challenges in life. We'll have periodic blogs as well as information, memes, and the like, uh, but it also, if, if you know folks who are going through a rough time and but need some grief counseling, uh, that they can see me. Uh, we also heard from Putnam Service Dogs, um, who provide service dogs for uh, folks uh, with physical disabilities rather than just blindness. They need help raising puppies. Um, so if you're able to do that, they need some volunteer fosters to do that. There's information in your bulletin uh, about that, uh, or you can contact them directly. What? There's a lot going on. It's not even lunch yet. Uh, anything else that folks would like to bring to the attention of the community? Seeing none, I invite you to stand as we conclude our worship together. Oh, wait. We have to farewell to the hallelujah. What am I thinking? Oh, okay. <laughs> So I don't know if the kids are around or not, um, but let's, we're going to, um, if somebody could go grab some kids, because we're going to be folding up the Alleluia, go grab a few of them, or all of them, doesn't matter. 
Um, and so that's very true. <laughs> so just as Jesus set his face for Jerusalem, as our focus shifts, as we seek to follow Jesus, we set aside our songs of Alleluia for the season, mindful of our need for grace. May we hear the echoes of Alleluia when we approach the morning and again. Let's sing Alleluia, song of gladness, as we put away our Alleluia's. Never kids come. Go ahead.